Okay, for Big Casting the Shallows, this is my rendition of what's going to happen. All right, the rod tip over here would normally vibrate. It will, it will dip, dip, dip if there is something at the bottom pulling at the bait. Now, normally the bait will be here at the bottom, but what I'm going to do now is I'm going to bring it up here. Now, the way I'm going to bring it up here is I'm going to attach... Um, on my swivel over here I'm going to attach a little bullet float like that you see it's a little torpedo clear float and it's going to sit exactly like this and it's going to bob up and down okay so if this works that means by the end of the day th there'll be bait here the bait will stay there and all day long this rod tip will not bounce up and down when it bounces up and down that means there's especially crabs or little fish tugging or eating at the bait all right so what we're trying to do is we're trying to prevent the sea life on the bottom especially crabs crabs have a tendency to rip off the baits in my bait bag so we don't want crabs to yank the bait and we don't want little fish or other things to eat the bait now the reason why i want the bait to be suspended is because there's a lot of predators swimming around and the little fish should be more open to the predators if they come up toward the surface so um, I don't think they're going to do that but this is why we're going to try this out all right now what does this mean in terms of bait usage bait usage means that we're going to save money on bait we don't have to buy a lot of bait like squid or shrimp or fish it means we're going to spend less money we're going to save money it means that less time be um, going to the market buying the bait as well as the wife being happy that's going to be less bait in the freezer and her freezer could be be less smelly all right now say for example um this lead at the bottom over here is about three ounces four ounces five ounces the heavier the better as long as the rod is rated for it because you want a nice clean angle to your rod tip okay so if we make the lead line here which is the swivel if we make the lead line long that's going to be perfect see if the water here is about four feet deep we want maybe five feet of lead line here possibly six now say for example the water here is eight feet you can still go with the uh, four to five feet of lead line except that now this little float here will maybe be about here now you don't want that float to pull the lead off the bottom that's why I always go with this system with a smaller float okay and I always go with either a wired bank meaning wires coming off of the lead or I'm going to just use a, a slightly larger lead than normal and I prefer the slightly larger lead but if you're in an area that has a lot of current, then I suggest going with the wire lid. So this is what we're going to try today out in the field at Chocolate Beach. We'll see what happens. Alrighty. Okay, let's see how our, our live bait uh, net is working. And we caught us a couple crabs already. Look at that. Got us a couple blue pincher crabs for bait. That was fast. They're hungry this morning. Just turn them upside down and they're in there. So we, we're on our way. We're going to take our crab, pinch off the tip of the pinchers. Now, crabs, well, like most crustaceans, will grow this back. 
but the reason why I do this is because I don't get pinched when I uh, do this and when the fish come after the bait um, it, the crab looks a little bit more defenseless see what I did and what's what's good about this is that at the end of the day if nothing hits it hits this I'm throwing the crab back and within the week it's gonna go back to tips and the crab will still keep living so this way I keep reusing my resources here and I can throw this back in the water if I don't catch anything by, with it by the end of the day hey guys I'm gonna be showing you how to make a loop knot I'll be fishing in very shallow reefs so I'm gonna be fishing roughly three to four feet of water this is a loop knot so I'll show you how to make this. If you're fishing three to four feet of water, you want at least five feet of mono. I'm going 20 pound test on this because the braid we're using is, for the main line is 40 pounds. And the, the uh, spinner reels I'm using have max drags of over 30 pounds. So the 20 pound mono will be easy to break. So what we're gonna do, we get the line, okay. We're going to double it, okay, see, and then notice I'm going to pinch it, see, pinch it here, so we got, that line is pinch, so what we're going to do is we're going to make a loop like that, put it through the hole, okay, notice that, there is one loop, See that one loop? We're gonna put it through the loop again the second time. Okay. So now we're gonna double it, make it extra strong. Uh, hold on, let's see. See that, look. Two times we went through that loop. We want to pull it tight, finger tight like that, and we want at least about a two inch gap like that, and I'll show you why in a moment. So when we get our lead, I can loop this to the lead like so, see, get the pinched area, put it to the eyelet of the lead, See you now, like so, loop it around like so. See that? And we pull it taut, bingo. Now you can reverse that to take it off. And I already have one on the other end. So what I do is I, I put this on my swivel and I can take it off the swivel the same way. And that way it's easy on and off system when you're out in the field. Got that? Thank you. Okay, this is a big rig. I have a Cobble 80 on it with 80 pound braid. It's a pretty beefy rig. It's on a 13-3 ballistic rod. Custom wrap only for spinners instead of conventionals. So we're gonna put our lead line as highlighted in a video that I'm going to do later on tonight. Let's see, a line here is going to be roughly about six feet long because we're going to be with, um, throwing this probably in about four to five feet of water and it's mid tide right now. So, and that, like I said, the uh, max drag on the reel is 50 pounds, 55 pounds. The braid is 80, so we're going to use some leader line, the only 20 pound test, so in case it does get stuck, I can yank it out, but I don't think that's going to be a problem here because this area is just kind of like mud and rocks. Okay, take our end, we're going to make a double loop knot, okay, to make a single loop knot, just go to it one time, but to make a double one, Okay, 
to make a double one, we're going to go to it a second time. So this way, less chance of it pulling out if it does get stuck in something. See that? That's a double loop knot. Now I'm going to do the same thing to the other end and I'll show you why in a moment. Loop knots are great for your, your lead line and I'll show you why. There you go, double. And you can just keep using this, okay? This is about five, six feet long. So what we're gonna do is I ran out of five and six ounce, so I'm gonna just use four ounce. Four ounce is not gonna get it as far, this rig out as far as I want, but the four should do it. The, the six to me is a lot better when I just use strip baits or I use five ounce for heavier baits like um, bait bags. So see what I did here? I should show this again. Okay, got your loop. Put it through the hole of the bank. See how it comes out? There you go. That's why loop knots are so great, you know? You can take it off, put it on, interchange weights. Okay, this is our rig here. So what we're going to do is the other end here. See, we're going to thread it through the eye here. Put the lead through this, like so. Look at that. That's all you have to do. That's a double loop knot that I use for my lead line. Okay, I'm going to take our crab. I want the hook to be displayed on the back. Make it kind of like so. So I'm going to... Crisscross the cord about like that. Do it. Okay. Just keep crisscrossing it. doesn't have to look pretty, which it doesn't, <laughs> but you can see what I did, and hopefully I left myself enough of a tag here to tie some granny knots into this. a little bit more tag on this one. There we have it. All rigged and ready to go out. We're going to try something different today. Normally this will sit at the bottom or close to the bottom. But over here at Chalking Beach, the crabs have a tendency to tear up the bait. And even if I use bait bags, they'll shred it up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to float this on the surface. And the reason, uh, the way I'm going to show you is that this is very aerodynamically shaped. I get this uh, at a few specialty stores here like Charlie's Fishing Supply and Brian's Fishing Supply. 
It's, it's like a little torpedo lid, except that it's a plastic um, sealed float. All right. So we're gonna put our mono line through here. Put it through here. Okay. No need to be that fancy about it. Go. One. Two. And that's it. That's all you have to do. You can get clip off the tag in. We're not little bugs, so I always keep my clippings and other whatnot in my wagon, like so. That's it. So when it's tossed out, see the bullet shape here will be very aerodynamic. If you get the old wooden floats, it's gonna actually have wind resistance. It's gonna uh, slow down your cast and your distance. This, when you're tossing it, would be like a torpedo shape going like that. When it's floating on the surface, it'll be like this. And see, this is the lead line and I'll have the bait line coming off of this. This will suspend everything off the bottom and hopefully will keep the crabs off of my baits. Thank you. Hey, I'm normally used to getting, using a six ounce. But I'm gonna have to stick with a four today. Yeah, good enough. Walk this back. Bell on. Put the clip on. And the waiting game starts. Okay, here's a little secret about bait bags. All the the ink and the gauze from the squid. I save it and I soak soak the bag with it. Sometimes I freeze it overnight like this. So it gets a scent in there. Now the scent is all over the bag and it's a stinky one. So what we do is we dress a shrimp. Now I found the best way for me to, to do shrimps for the bait bags. I'll show you in a moment. Let me just get this out. Okay. You notice there's a spike on the head here? See that? That would catch in the bag. So I cut that spike off, all right? See how the gullers are coming out? I purposely choose shrimps that has a lot of stuff in the head area, meaning eggs. So I, I cut it like so, and like that, okay? Look at all the little insects going for that already. What I do is I put the tail in first as the buffer. See? Like so. And I'll tell you this. Ooh, this bag stinks, but that's good. Then I'll put the main body in. See? Evenly stretch across. Now the head is all the gullas are. I purposely left some meat here as a stopper and this is the other part that I do is I put a slit across the head like that see so that will slowly open and leach out all the rest of the juicy insides of the head you notice that we cut off the tip the spike tip there so we can shove it in there without it stabbing the bag from the inside and getting all caught up Okay, that's how we do it. And this stuff is actually very smelly, which is good. And what we 
do is just see just twist and turn back and forth put it in here like so about five times you do it there like that see that's it so what's going to happen is this will be on the surface like so oh my hands are all slippery so it'll be on the surface like so the uh bait will be suspended underneath see this lid be on the bottom and this is how the whole setup is going to look and the bait will, the bait bag will be suspended over the bottom so the crabs can't get to it now the little fish will still be able to get to it but a lot of little fish don't like coming near the surface because now they're open to attack from predators so I'm betting that um, this should last a lot longer today. Okay, this is the 13 foot plus IRW with the Shimano 5500. Boom, nice toss. Okay. Walk it back. Okay, make the line taut. All right. Put the bell up. Put that clip line on because after you spend a couple hundred dollars on these rigs, you do not want to lose them. Okay, there we go. All ready to boogie. Well, it's 4.30 in the afternoon. Unfortunately, I never caught anything today. Had one big hit earlier and it just ran straight. It chewed up the live crab. I had a feeling it was a stingray, but it came off. But all day long, those tips have never vibrated. That means that none of the um, creatures on the bottom, like crabs, little fish, have nibbled, tried to nibble off the baits. The baits were perfect all day long. I've been able to go with the same bait, never had to change anything, which shows that putting those little torpedo um, floats on it that kept it off the bottom was perfect. I never had to change baits all day long. So in this area that is prone to have a lot of small little critters on the bottom like crabs, wasn't able to chew off the bait and I was able to save um, a tremendous amount of bait and money and time today because of that. So even though I didn't catch anything today, unfortunately, um, what I came out here to show is that those little um, floats will work it, as long as you can keep your bait above the bottom that's all that matters you, you can use the, the old style wooden floats um, anything you want but I just wanted to show that it does work thank you at the end of the day I keep everything in a bag and I throw everything away don't be a little bug Mahalo.